So what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna try and tackle the same idea of tangents and normals, but we're gonna stay as far away from t as we possibly can. So I'm gonna go right back to the first line that we wrote down, x squared equals 4ay, and I'm gonna write that guy. If x squared equals 4ay, and I wanna find a tangent to this thing, like forget about all the stuff you knew about parameters before. If I wanna find a tangent to this thing, what information do I need? I need a gradient, right? How do I find the gradients of functions again? I, I differentiate. Thank God I know how to differentiate. This is in a weird form to differentiate though, right? I, I'm used to having on the left hand side, y equals. This is sort of geared in a little weird way. So let's just make the left hand side y equals. How do I, what do I do to both sides? I'll divide by that pesky 4a and that'll get y on its own. I might as well swap sides while I'm at it. Okay, that looks good. This is all ready for differentiating, which of course I have to do because I don't just know the parameter, which is the gradient. I have to actually do the legwork to get there. In this case, dy on dx is going to be equal to what? So the power comes down the front. Uh, that's a 4. And then you can cancel. So far, so good. Does that look all right? Okay, now at this point, we say I've got the gradient at any point, and then I've got, well, any point on the parabola, x1, y1, right? So I can say at x1, y1, what will the gradient actually be equal to? Well, I'm going to have to substitute this point into this formula. dy on dx, I should have a comma there. At x1, y1, dy on dx will be equal to, specifically at this point, the x1 on 2a. I'm substituting this coordinate into there. Is that okay? x1 on 2a. I have a point. I've got a gradient. That's all I need. What am I going to do with these guys? Point gradient form is really easy, isn't it? So I'm going to say equation of the tangent is... Uh, what do we got here? y minus y1 equals... Okay, now I want you to have a look at this because this is, this is okay, this is good, there's nothing wrong with this, but it's sort of not what I expected. It wasn't what I was meant to end up with because we know where we're supposed to land. Let me try and prove to you that this is not what we're expecting. Um, there's a fraction here, so I can get rid of the fraction, no problem. I will multiply both sides by 2a. That gives me this. Now that looks a lot like what I'm supposed to get, but it's not. It's not what I'm supposed to get. Um, there's minus signs, we're not supposed to have minus signs. And in fact, there's a whole extra term. Can you see the whole extra term? Where is it? Yeah, you're like, there's supposed to be just x, x1 here. But here I've got like extra stuff flying around. What's going on, okay? So let's see if I can expand over here and work out where this extra thing has come from. Okay, um, I'll expand this for reasons that will become clear in a second as well. Okay, so I've expanded, hmm. and this is the culprit. This is the one that really doesn't belong. There's nothing like that. There's nothing like this guy in the final line that I'm supposed to land on. Do you see that? It's like this, the sore, sore thumb that's sticking out. Okay, so how do I get rid of this? Yeah, Eric, suggestions. Okay, where is my first equation? Here it is, okay? Here is my first equation, okay? Now, x1 and y1, they're not just any points. They are points on the parabola, yeah? And if they're points on the parabola, that means that they satisfy this equation. That means I can take both these guys and I can put them into here and it's true. Um, when a point isn't on the parabola, if I put them in, what happens? It, it doesn't work, it breaks down, it explodes, okay? But these are on the parabola, so I should be able to substitute them in, which gives me this. Do you agree? Like that's just a straight substitution of x1, y1 into x and y, okay? And this, you can see, links in quite nicely, because look there, see that? That x1 squared, that sore thumb that is sticking out, I can substitute 
for this guy, which I already have. I can do some collecting of like terms here. So let's do this. On the left hand side, I won't muck around with it while I'm doing the substitution. On the right hand side, this I can replace with, yeah, 4ay1. 4ay1. One. And now you can see where the final line comes from. I'm almost there. Two lines maybe. Okay. Um, I'm going to collect like terms because here and here I have these um, ay1 terms. So I'm going to add 4ay1 to both sides. That leaves me with this. And I'm pretty much there, aren't I? I'll get the x, x1 on the left hand side, like where it belongs, and then I'm just going to factorize the other side. Hey presto, okay? So the only weird thing about this, and just like all the other forms, you can quote this, but you have to be ready to prove it, okay? The only curveball that they throw in there is this part here, going from this line to this line, okay? That's, that's a weird trick. We've ne we don't really use that trick, but it's kind of neat, right? It does simplify things. Um, I think we can all argue that this is better than this, okay? So you have to be able to recognize, ooh, that's an extension one level trick, right? It's, it's sort of Jedi mind trick, like, whoa, when did, where did that come from? It's often not the kind of thing that you would guess.